What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today we're going to be jumping back into the penitentiary mind state. I know a lot of people, man, a lot of people say, man, stop talking about prison. Okay, stop talking. You're not in prison no more. But this channel is built and intended for the individuals that might be going to prison. You know, one out of 200 people are locked up in a prison right now in America. That's right. One out of 200. That's a lot of freaking people. And a lot of these individuals are out on bond, terrified, not knowing what the hell they're going to do. They've never had any kind of experience being locked up. They might not even be on the streets. They might be, you know, going to prison on some white collar crime. They're not about that life, but guess what? They're going to have to go. So always keep that in mind when you're watching this channel. It's helping a lot of individuals. I'm not just here meditating on my past and, you know, cherishing my moments in the penitentiary. Look, prison was hell on earth. I cannot sit here and explain that enough to you. I mean, I had a decent time in there for what it was worth, but at the same time, man, you're just rotting away, you know? You're just rotting away and there's nothing cool about prison. So with that being said, let me also tell you my back is blown out. That's right, every now and then, like once every five, six months or so, my back will go out on me. I don't know why. It's like I got some kind of pinch nerve, but I went to go pick up Lucy last night and her big bone self just freaking broke me down. I felt like I got shot in the back. And now it's a struggle for me to even sit here in this chair to make this video. But I am pushing through it and I'm making y'all some content. So I hope you enjoy. And the people that might be going to prison, I hope you learn something from this. Because this is real stuff, all right? Uh, you know, I, I made a video on, you know, how not to look like a fresh fish in jail. And this kind of falls into the lines of that category. Jail and prison are very different, all right? They're very different. I mean, there's some things that are pretty much the same, but when it comes to the lifestyle, the lifestyle and how inmates live, it's totally different, okay? When you go into prison, people are doing some serious freaking time. In jail, they're just awaiting. They don't know if they're gonna be facing a lot of time. And sometimes jail can be worse than prison, believe it or not, because people are so stressed to freak out and they don't know, you know, they're just getting taken away from their family and all kinds of stuff is going through their head. They just now losing their jobs, losing their kids, losing their marriage. But when you get to prison, you know, a lot of people have kind of settled down. They, they've came into terms with what they're facing or what they're going to have to do. But when you get into prison, there's inmates that's been sitting there for years and years. And that's what's bugging them now. Okay. Not the fact that they don't know what's going to happen, but the fact that they know they, they're probably never going to see the streets again. And also when it comes to gang life, man, it's a lot more organized and the racism level definitely increases when you get to prison. But I'm going to tell you all a few things, a few tricks. If you do happen to go to prison and you don't know what to do, you, you might need to meet someone or break the ice. A lot of people, that's one of their number one worries, okay? It's not really so much being raped or stabbed, okay? Because a lot of people in jail will tell you that that stuff doesn't really happen so much. And the individuals that are getting stabbed and stuff like that are usually gang affiliated or people that owe debts, okay? So the majority of people going into prison are really worried about if they're going to be able to fit in, you know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you a few things that you can do to really fit in, break the ice, and get into the groove of your stay in prison. Now we got to break it down in steps. The first thing that you're going to be doing when you step foot in prison, okay, you're going to be eyeballing everything. People are going to be eyeballing you. But the very first thing, okay, after getting booked in and going through all your little physicals and stuff like that, you're going to be going through a series of holding cells, all right, holding cells. A lot of people like me, when I first went to prison, they put me in this cell. I thought that was my cell for the rest of the bid, but it wasn't. It was like a little receiving room, all right, so they jumped me around to two different cells before I even got to the main population. So usually, when you go to prison, the first cell that they put you in is not gonna be where you're housed for you know the remainder of your sentence, so just keep that in mind. But when you do get to the housing unit and you see all these people staring at you, everyone's like, okay, we got someone new. What you're gonna do is walk straight to your cell. But when you get to your cell, more than likely your cellmate's not gonna be in there. And especially depending on what kind of level of prison, let's say you're in a low level prison, dude's probably out doing activities until, you know, count time or something along those lines, or going to school. But usually in like a three or a four, if your cellie's not in there, he's probably in the pod, you know, because there's really not too much movement going on. I mean, there is movement going on, but not as much as in a low level prison. So you're gonna be looking out for your cell. He might even be in the cell. That, that'd probably be the best route that you should hope for. But if he's not in the cell, 
you're gonna ask someone close to you, hey, you know who sleeps in this cell? You know, after putting your stuff up. Usually the cellmate that you have will come up and introduce himself. You know, he'll see you unpacking all the stuff in his cell and you'll walk up there and say, what's up, you know. But the point is you're gonna wanna meet your cellie. First thing, smoking, okay? Have a little sit down with him and find out what kind of individual he is because you're gonna be doing a lot of time with him. You know, you don't, you're not getting transferred unless you get in some trouble or something along those lines. You're gonna be spending all your time in the cell with that guy, you know? So you're gonna wanna get to know him and figure out if you can actually do that. And a lot of new individuals will go into the cell thinking that that's the cell that they have to stay in, you know? Uh, they have these people, well, they're like counselors, okay? They're like counselors and you can talk to them about certain things in prison or even, you know, the correctional officers. You can tell them straight up, look, me, I talked to this cellmate, man, you just moved me in this cell, I talked to him, man, we are not, we are not clicking, okay? There's gonna be some serious problems if you don't find me a new cell, you know? And that's just, it. let's say your cellmate's a really old individual, s stubborn, probably looks like a racist, you know what I mean? You don't want to be doing time next to that dude. So you might have to tell the correctional officer or whoever sergeant lieutenant that might walk through, look, don't think of yourself any lower by doing this, okay? It's not any kind of fear, okay? It's just simply because, hey, you know you ain't going to click with this dude. You know you're not going to be able to spend a certain amount of time with them. But you got to approach these correctional officers the right way. You can't just say, hey, oh man, I got to get out of this cell. This guy's too old, man. He's too old. I can't, I can't click with him. You can't say that, you know? I always said the same thing every time if I didn't like the person that they put me in the cell with. Look, me and homeboy are going to have problems, all right? As soon as you lock these doors, I can almost guarantee the goon squad's going to come, you know? So it's up to y'all. And typically, they're going to get you up out of there. They don't feel like dealing with all that drama, but sometimes they won't. They'll call your bluff and leave you in there, you know what I mean? But anyways, you're going to want to figure out how your celly is and if you can do time with them. The next thing is very vital to me. I think it is one of the most important things for you to get into the mix and break the ice with a whole bunch of different kinds of individuals. And keep in mind, we're talking about Virginia State Penitentiary. Uh, it's nothing like the West Coast where it's all segregated. You're going to be dealing with all kinds of races, okay? Not just your kind. I mean, unless you want to just deal with your kind. But sooner or later, you're going to get in the mix with other individuals, man. That's just how it is. It's blended. And a lot of prisons are blended. But one of the best ways to break the ice and get to know individuals within the pod, man, you better learn on the streets or in jail how to play cards, okay? no, It don't matter what institution you're in, unless it's like some kind of super max. You're going to come in the pod and you're going to see people either playing chess, uh, dominoes, checkers, cards, spades, pinochle. This is the type of stuff that you better have learned in jail. Because like playing cards and tabletops like that is just like second nature to... Uh, people in prison, okay? That's just, it's like drinking water, eating food. That's something that's always being done. And you think that a lot of card games might have gambling. A lot of card games, they don't gamble, you know what I mean? I used to roll up into a pod for the first time, even though it wasn't my first day in prison, but I got transferred maybe to a new prison or a new pod. Man, I would put my stuff down, talk to the celly. I would go down to the spade table or whatever, and I'd be like, yo, who's got next? You know, I don't even know any of their names yet. You know, I don't know any of their names. I'll be like, who's got next? And they'll be like, you. And then, you know, once you start playing cards, you get to small talking. They'll be asking you questions the whole time they're playing cards. But yeah, yeah, so where are you coming from, bro? You know, uh, what kind of charges you have? And they're going to start questioning you left and right. Now, another major thing that you need to look out for, okay, when you first come into prison, there might be people coming up to you. Yeah, even in Virginia prison where the racism and the segregation isn't really at high, uh, there's still a, a higher level of racism than you ever seen on the streets, okay? So when you go into prison, let's say uh, you, you go into your cell for the first time and two guys come and roll up on you, two black dudes. Let's say you're a white guy, okay, and two black guys roll up on you. That's not typically, they're not typically going to be looking to make friends, okay? They're actually doing some fishing. Someone probably sent them your way to do a little fishing, find out if you're a child molester, find out if you got any money. You know, they might ask you crazy certain questions that might lead into canteen, you know. Man, don't fall into that trap. Don't, as soon as you meet someone and you start talking about money and food, that's bad, okay? That's bad. Do, just completely veer off of those questions, you know. Don't be scared to be like, look, that, you know, bro, what does that have to do with anything? You know what I mean? What is that, what is my money or my food? How are we even, how did we even get to this subject of canteen, bro? I, I don't even know your name. So be on the lookout for that, man. People are always out there scouting. And you might have, uh, typically, you might have an old individual come up to you, man. For real. 
most of the times it's the older individuals that come up to someone because they can see if someone looks like they're probably lost or uh, shy or intimidated. They, they kind of, it's almost like their way of doing time, meeting new individuals and get telling youngins the ropes. But some of these old heads might be freaking booty bandits. So you got to be very careful, man. You know, it's so hard to explain because there's so many different variations in prison. You know, so many different kinds of inmates, so many different kinds of prisons that roll in different ways. And, you know, there's a lot of undercover homosexuals in prison, man. You might not have any earthly idea that that dude's on that type of level, but he's, he's trying to become your friend and sugar you up to become, you know, your little, his little sex toy. For real. That stuff happens on a regular basis. I told the story on little Bobby and a lot of people said, hey, you should have helped little Bobby. Look. How am I going to help little Bobby? You know what I mean? I can't help little. I can't help everybody. And you know, the same thing goes for a black guy. If he goes into the cell and two white dudes roll up on him, ask him all kinds of crazy questions, man, even though you more than likely will never see that in a Virginia prison. Normally, a black dude walking into prisons and be rolled up on by his own race. You know, you, you typically don't ever see a white dude, just a couple white guys just roll up on a black dude on his first day in prison, walk in the cell and ask him questions. You don't see that. Shoot, I don't think I've ever seen that. You know what I mean? So yeah, always be on high alert on who's going to be talking to you first, okay? Find out who your celly is. And I can't stress this enough. One of the best ways to break the ice is to learn your tabletops, okay? Go out there, start playing cards. After you use a phone or something, whatever the case is. And then when you're playing cards, you know, dude might question you a little bit. And you answer the questions truthfully. And then you start asking him questions on how everything functions. Hey, how many people do I need to get a shank? How many people are carrying shanks in this prison? Uh, is there people getting raped? You can literally ask these dudes all this stuff. They might laugh at you, some of them, but some of them are going to be real and authentic with you, man. You know, uh, these are real questions that you need to ask in the penitentiary, especially someone that you might be playing cards with for a day or two. Very vital, especially with the shank uh, situation, man. A lot of establishments, they carry a lot of shanks, you know, and you might seriously need to get yourself one. And that's, that's just the facts of life in the penitentiary. You also got to be ready to fight. You know, a lot of people ask me, hey, is it possible for you to go through prison and jail without fighting at all? Man, look, I'm sure probably it is, okay? But I'll tell you this right now, it's very rare, okay? Very rare that you're not going to at least get in a fight during your whole time in jail and prison. You're going to, I can almost guarantee 99% of the time, you're going to have to throw them hands, regardless of what kind of respect you show to people and how polite you are, someone's gonna test you and you're gonna have to throw them hands. Just mark my words. Even me, man, I was one of the easiest going cats, most joyful and cheerful individual in prison, always making people laugh, telling crazy stories. I still fought, but most of the times that I fought were on my own choice because people were annoying the shit out of me, you know? Sometimes, man, when you get around a certain pod or block these dudes be going crazy man and one thing i can't stand is a bunch of freaking foolery you know what i mean i like to i like to play and have fun you know goof off but sometimes man these individuals just push every button and they don't mean to that's just how they are they're acting like freaking fools especially when i'm on the phone trying to hear my old lady talk dirty to me and someone wants to just keep on freaking screaming and carrying on i'll never forget that i dropped that freaking phone so quick and put hands on on the guy, you know what I mean? It was a good rumble though. He got, I ain't gonna lie, he got the better half of me. Man, I'll tell you what, I apologize if you see me doing these little cut scenes. I'm going back and forth in my seat. My back is killing me, you know? And I think it all started from prison, believe it or not. I was doing uh, clean presses on the yard. Clean presses are pretty hard to do. You pick them up from the ground, throw them up, press them and bring it back down and you know one time I did it and then my back just went out on me right there in a freaking weight weight pit and I had to have strangers help me carry me off the freaking yard you know what I mean I was completely immobile but I've told that story before anyways now one more thing on your first day how to break the ice man this is uh, very vital as well and I'm not talking about no level five or six super max where you're 23 and one I'm talking about like uh you know, level four and under, okay, because level four and under typically have these kind of things going on, okay, sports, okay, you go into the rec yard, you don't know anybody, but you might see a soccer game jumping, a uh, softball game, you won't probably see softball too much anymore, they're pretty much getting rid of those, you know, uh, handball, 
Uh, basketball, I wouldn't typically say basketball unless you know you know how to play basketball. Because most of the time, I said in my previous videos, uh, black dudes run the basketball court. You know what I mean? So whether you're white or black, just don't think that you're going to go on the basketball court and play a quick game of pig. All right? Almost every single time they go to rec yard, they have some kind of tournament going on. So just keep that in mind. But when it comes to like soccer or you know any other kind of sport, handball, stuff like that that's going on in the yard, look, that's, those individuals are typically the ones that you want to say, hey, can, can I get in on it? You know, because they're, you know, they're active, okay? Most people that are on the yard and are active, they're not really into too much unless they're lifting weights. Uh, but most people that are doing sports are not really into the drama of the prison, okay? You'll be able to tell because the individuals that are all about that penitentiary life, that gangster penitentiary life, they're usually huddled up, you know, talking about the drama going on or they're, clicked up within the yard. The other individuals, you know, that aren't really about none of that crap, they're over there playing soccer, you know, uh, doing freaking triathlon type stuff, and playing frisbee, stuff like that. Those kind of cats, they're not worried about the freaking prison politics so much. They're just doing their own thing and killing their time. But the guys in the yard to look out for, the ones that are huddled up, clicked up, you know, they're just standing, staring at everything going on, you know, just acting really suspect. But for the most part, you know, people playing sports are typically the ones for you to meet and introduce yourself for the first time because they're already mingling with all other kinds of races by playing sports. You're going to see, and keep this in mind, this is in Virginia, all right? And I know it happens like this in a lot of other prisons, a lot of other prisons. You'll go out there, you might see black, white, Hispanic, Asian all playing a soccer game, you know? And those are the guys you want to get up with because they're not worried about race. They're not worried about their gangs or anything like that because if they were, they'd be chilling with their whole clique. But, you know, to wrap this up, there's all kinds of ways for you to break the ice and introduce yourself to individuals. But there's one huge piece of advice I do need to tell you, man. Do not, do not act more hard than what you are. Nobody likes you acting like a freaking hard ass. No one likes that, okay? Just be you. Be relaxed, take your time with individuals, and don't try to show off or tell crazy war stories or try to get in a mix with the most gangster-fied individuals in the pod, man. I can almost guarantee that you're going to live to regret it. Your word is bond and respect in the penitentiary goes a very, very long way. It's nothing like the respect out here in the streets. I'm talking about the respect level is so high that I'm talking about if you even drop your pencil in front of someone the wrong way. It could get you freaking beat down, okay? Always make sure you say, excuse me, pardon me, uh, I apologize. You know, it's so strange because in the streets you'll never hear that kind of stuff. But in prison, man, it's like you got to be 100% polite, okay? Because the wrong wrong way that you handle something, could another inmate could take it personally and straighten it right there on the spot just simply because you didn't say excuse me it's very strange man it's very strange how everyone has to be so polite sometimes in prison but you know there's other inmates they aren't polite at all you know they aren't polite at all they just carry you and they know you're not going to do nothing because they got 50 freaking soldiers behind them you know what i mean but there are people that do do something and typically they get beat the hell out of by more than one individual but anyways, until the next time, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. My back is absolutely killing me. I got to get out of here. Go check out all of the links in the description of the video. And oh, yesterday I had a little uh, family dinner uh, in my mom's house and my brother made his debut appearance. And I'm going to be making that video. It's going on my wife's channel, The Compound 24-7. If y'all want to know what my older brother, my oldest brother looks like, and how he acts. He even tells a couple crazy stories of when I was a little kid. Uh, go check out her channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the little notification bell. And also keep this in mind, all the people that you might see on her channel that's my family members, uh, they're pretty much my only family members because uh, I have a whole nother side of my family on my mom's side, but they all live in Colombia, South America, except for my cousin. She lives in Texas. And one of these days, I'm going to get her on this channel, man. Love you, cousin. But anyways, as always, I salute to every last one of you who've been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. And before we end this, I'm going to show you the door of fame so that y'all do believe that I am putting all of y'all's donations on the door. I'm going to do a little slow jank really quick. Hold on. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. This is the door, ladies and gentlemen.
my back is messed up. I just put this up here for some other day. Blue hair, Becky. I told you I'd draw your name up there with someone with some blue hair. <laughs> I did some crazy blue hair, though. Uh, we got all kinds of names up here, man. We got JS. We got Rob Knox for, like, fourth time. Uh, but he was the very first one to donate. You see that? Rob Knox is first blood. Thank you, my friend. Very first one. Uh, we got... My handwriting is pretty crazy. Only I can really read it sometimes. We got Quiz right here by the doorknob. Outlaw Jones. What else we got going on? We got Crystal. We got J Hood. We got uh, Story Time with Steve. Look, I even got uh, Tear Talk up here. Remember that guy that was disrespecting me in that video I was telling you all about? Well, there you go. Tear Talk. He donated. He stayed on the door. I'm not salty. You know what I mean? We got uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> I love that name. Every time I see I love that name, man. Uh, Geo, we got all kinds of names up here, man. All kinds of names. But anyways, uh, I just want to thank all these individuals who have been uh, donating, looking out for the cookout, man. Y'all mean a lot to me and everyone who doesn't donate, man. If you're just watching my content and supporting this channel, I have much love for everyone, everyone who rocks with me, man. Y'all be easy, be safe, and happy holidays.